there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Right, we are off. What are you living in? What are you living in? It could be a skull from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. You all right, Sean? He's having a fit. We suspect she's deaf. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. You're alive, why are you, aren't you? <laughs> Transforming their lives. I want to give them plenty of praise as well. Give them a lad, give a boy. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub. Finding them forever homes. They love chasing the ball, don't they? In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? My guardian angel in disguise, you are. Giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. To see them now acting like proper puppies is just lovely. They are the dog rescuers. I love my job. <laughs> On today's show, we'll see how some amazing dogs survive neglect, recover from serious injury, and even overcome anxiety to get a fresh start in life. And I'll be spending the day with older boy Tyson here at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey. He's been waiting to find his new home for over four months now. Too long, isn't it, boy? Come on. Coming up. It's the little one I'm the most concerned about. Inspector Claire Wilson is determined to get treatment for the tiniest Yorkshire Terrier she's ever seen. I realise this is upsetting, but I'm going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. I'm going to shut the door, otherwise he'll get stressed watching you, easy. It's an emotional day for Hershey Bowl, as an owner reluctantly signs over her dog. You OK? It's the best decision for him. All right, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. And it's a life-changing rescue for skinny and scared Roxy. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. And what can I do for you today? I'll pass that forth to the officers now, and they'll assess best thing needed for the dog's welfare there. In North Yorkshire, Inspector Claire Wilson is responding to a call from a member of the public. Yeah, that's no problem. Can you just text me the log number? About some dogs that seem to be in a bad way. There's a number of, I think, Yorkshire Terrier dogs. They're heavily matted and also some of them are really underweight. It sounds quite serious and I think the environment's not going to be very good for them either. So I need to have a look and see what's going on. I've been to lots of thin dog complaints. I would always have to start investigating that. When I'm walking up to a door, I never know what I'm going to find inside. You have to expect the unexpected. Hiya, from the RSPCA. We've just had a call about um, the dogs and the conditions that they're living in. Claire is denied entry by the owner. Her husband is ill inside and can't be disturbed, but Claire needs to see the dogs. Right, OK. Well, would you be able to bring the dogs to the door then so that I can have a look at them? The owner has five Yorkies altogether and she brings them out to her car to be examined. <laughs> you cute, aren't you? Oh, hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> so they've all got a bit of discharge coming from their eyes. Most of the dogs look in reasonable condition, but there's one exception. It's the little one I'm the most concerned about. So this is the one that I'm the most concerned about, because he's got, obviously, quite a lot of discharge coming from his eyes. But that's not Claire's main worry about the dog, ten-year-old Taz. He's very thin. I'm sufficiently concerned about him that I think he needs to go to a vet straight away and it would help me if I can see what environment they're living in as well. The owner still refuses to let Claire inside the house, but does reveal that the dogs are being kept in one room. Five dogs probably shouldn't be living in one room, so I need to see, you know, what needs to be done in the rest of the house. The really important part of this job, that you have the ability to negotiate with people. Oh, right, OK. 
I think with every animal, your protective instinct kicks in. Your main aim is to get that dog to a place of safety. I realise this is upsetting, but I'm going to have to do what's in the best interest of him. And if you don't give him permission to take him to the vets, then I am going to have to get the police out so that we enforce that. And I think it's got to the stage now that he's so thin that you, you should have done something sooner. The distressed owner eventually consents to let Claire take Taz to the vet. He might be 10, but he's as tiny as a puppy. OK, so if you just sign there... As the environment the dogs were living in is also a potential problem, Claire still needs to check inside the house. You have to take the person's circumstances into account, and I'm always sympathetic as to their circumstances. But we can't just walk away. If the vet considers that an offence has been committed, then if, if you refuse me entry to the house, I'm then going to have to go to the police and get a warrant to come into the house. So the only way that I'm going to be able to tell whether it's suitable or not is for me to come in and have a look. The owner finally agrees to let Claire in. The room the dogs are in isn't ideal, but it doesn't merit removing them. They just live in that room and then you take them out for walks. I'll get Taz off to the vets. I'll give you a ring and let you know what's happening. Thank you. Bye-bye. The woman's in a difficult situation. She's, her husband's very poorly and she's obviously caring for him as well. We take people's circumstances into account, but we've, we've got to make sure that animals go to a vet when, when they need to. Tiny Taz is now off to be examined. The result will determine if he is allowed to return home. Ten-year-old Yorkshire Terrier Taz has just been handed over to Claire Wilson for a vet check. Hello. Hello, little one. Right, shall we put this lead on you? I think we'll lift you, you're so tiny. Oh, you're not going to weigh much, are you? Cutie pie. The poor old fella is worryingly thin. It's OK. It's OK. Vet Michaela Wright's job will be to determine if he is suffering and whether or not he should be returned to his owner. One-point-something kilo dog. You're a good boy. Titchy Taz weighs just a kilo and a half. He should weigh almost twice as much. There we go. All right, so if we start at the front, we've got quite a lot of discharge from both eyes, which is a bit crusty, and his eyes are quite inflamed. All right, little man. I know. So that one's even more yeah. inflamed, but there's quite a lot of discharge there. Have a look at your teeth, little man. I know. Oh, oh, sweetheart, he's missing quite a few teeth. And what's left, there's a little bit of tartar on, but they're not too bad, are they? Hey, Taz? OK, yeah, that side's worse. So he's got quite a lot of tartar on there and there's some gum recession and on the carnassial tooth, so it's possible that that'll need to come out. Feeling over here, his lymph nodes are fine, but you can feel that his shoulders are incredibly prominent, um, his scapulae. So we would classify this as a body condition score of one. A body condition score of one out of nine means the poor old chap is emaciated. Moving along his spine itself, the muscles here either side of the spine have got muscle wastage and all the pelvic bones are more prominent than they should be. He's got muscle wastage on his hind legs and less muscle than we'd expect on his front legs as well. This lack of muscle is affecting Taz's stability. He's standing strangely on his back legs, so now he doesn't want to put this right one down, and his kneecap is luxating on this right leg, so the kneecap is slipping on and off it? in the joint, yeah. That's not going to be helping him. What would you do about that? Does he need surgery? Or... I think at the moment we would wait and see how it develops when he's got some weight back on. Right, okay. um, and in an old dog like this, we wouldn't necessarily go for surgery. Yeah. It is likely that he's been caused unnecessary suffering. I also don't think his needs are being met. They're not noticing that he's underweight, for whatever reason that is. So whether he's eating enough, or whether it's because he's ill. Taz will have pain relief for his knee and drops for his sore eyes. 
he also needs some blood tests to check for any underlying medical conditions that might be causing his emaciation. Right, let's go this way. Hmm? Good boy, this way. Good boy, there's a clever lad. Right. Do, 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 do. OK, give me a break. Oh. I know, that was mean, wasn't it? Wasn't that bad, really, was it? He said, yes, it was. It was. Good boy, well right. done. Come on, come and have a cuddle. I know, it's OK. It's OK, she's going to get you some dinner. She is. What's this? Oh, what's this he got? Oh, you're interested, oh, aren't you? Yum, you're very yum. hungry. God, he's very hungry. Well, he's, I would never expect a Yorkie to eat like that, particularly as we've just upset him, you know. He, I would think he's probably very hungry, aren't you, little man? Yes. <laughs> now, you can't have any more or you'll be sick. As long as his bloods are OK, we should be able to get him back to uh, being a normal, healthy little dog. Hopefully, Taz has a bright future ahead of him. Meanwhile, Claire will be interviewing his owner. I don't think it was deliberate neglect. It's clear that she's got a lot on her plate. Um, she's, she's not in ideal situations her, herself. But we've got to sort out Taz's health problems. I know that he's, he's going to have a full belly and um, obviously not be in any pain tonight. So that's the main thing, as far as I'm concerned. We'll see how tiny Taz is doing later. Taz's owner didn't want to give him up. But in the Midlands, another owner has decided that might be the best option for her pet. For the past few weeks, Inspector Hershey Bowl has been dealing with an owner whose dog Simba has a profound attachment disorder. It's been destructive. You know, she told me uh, yesterday it's actually got a little bit worse now in that it's made a hole apparently in her carpet. And these are all classic signs of what's called separation anxiety. The dog just can't cope with being left on its own. You know, it's a very common problem. And it's one that's very difficult for an owner uh, to deal with. As soon as a dog knows it's on its own, it, it will get distressed. And, you know, I really feel for her, actually. You know, it must be really difficult. Simba's owner, Jennifer, has come to the reluctant conclusion that she'll have to give up her beloved dog. It's a very sad day for her because um, she loves this dog, she doesn't want to have to rehome it, but she understands, you know, that it's the best thing for the dog, and I have a lot of respect for those kind of owners. While some dogs are quite happy to be left alone for short periods, others become upset and agitated when there's no one around. As a result, they may bark, howl, go to the toilet indoors, or chew everything in sight, just like Simba. Hi, Jennifer. You all right? So, God, is this what Simba's done? Yeah. So when did he do this, then? When I was at work. Sh God, look. He's had a good go at that, hasn't yeah. he? Look at that. Yeah, he's chewed the bottom off my nose. So he's actually taken the entire bottom off? That's how anxious he gets. Yeah. Like is he chewing and barking? Yeah. Like, the only time he's quiet is when he's actually chewing. And this is just the beginning of the damage. Right, OK, so did he rip up this whole carpet? Yeah, and this is the bathroom door. Oh, God, right, yeah, yeah, is that right? Got to go he, at that. He's just, he's just chewed it, he just doesn't stop. He's actually chewed the wall yeah. in here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's Looks done a bad, lot of damage, yeah. hasn't he? Right, let's see the little menace then. Oh, Simba, hello, darling. Hello. Oh, Simba, oh, you're quiet today. Worried Simba, a seven-month-old husky lurcher cross, might be chewing the house, but he's having trouble eating actual food. Do you know, I think the threat, he's dropped, ever so slightly dropped some weight. He has. Yeah, I've he has. That. I've, I've just looked, see. I don't know whether see. it's stress. Whether yeah, it's, probably. He's not really been eating normally. Yeah. Either, like, I don't know, not, it seems really agitated. Yeah. So probably this behaviour's getting worse yeah. and he's getting more and more anxious, isn't it? I mean, I can put food down for him when I do leave. It will still be there by the time I get home. Really? So is he waiting for you to come home? Yeah, to as, leave? Soon as, as soon as I come home, he'll eat. Really? As soon as okay, I that's home, interesting. He'll have his water. Like, so he's so anxious that he can't even eat. Eats. You see, that's um, that you know, that, that's obviously uh, you know quite severe because it's affecting his uh, ability to want to eat anything yeah. as well. And that's what scares me the most because I don't want him. It's like not... he's not comfortable yeah. till you're around. Yeah. Oh, Simba. The 
dog can be trained to deal with separation anxiety, but this takes a lot of time, and sadly Jennifer's not able to commit at the moment. Look at your ears, you look like a bat. Simba. When he eats as well, his ears go back. Your ears are huge, aren't they? Oh, well, I think we've made friends at least, eh? We've made friends. Oh, darling. Oh, you are good. Um, I can go and grab a lead. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got a lead. Yeah? OK. Well, if you, if you want, Jennifer, you can bring him down and yeah, put him in the van. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And, Jennifer, I'm only going to... I'm going to shut the door, cage, and then I'm just going to do... Otherwise, he'll get stressed watching you, you see. All right, darling. You good boy. You OK? It's the best decision for him. All right, darling, you'll be fine. Oh, don't get upset. Honestly, I know it's not easy. I promise he'll be OK, OK? He's, just, he's a lovely dog. You know, look, you've done wonders with him, actually. You know, he's very sociable. Not a problem in that area at all, is he? You know, so this is going to be a, a sort of a bit of a new start for him and for you. But you've done a, you've done a great job. All right, darling, have a, try and have a good day. Right, thank you. Go make yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Simba's off to the rescue centre, where he'll receive all the help and care he needs. Hopefully, he'll soon find an owner who can devote more time to him. Come on, Simba. Just picked up a black female crossbreed type. Five days ago, in Lancashire, the RSPCA attended a complaint about a horribly emaciated and injured dog. Here you go. She's got various scars and injuries to her face, her legs, all over. She's in very poor body condition, very thin, emaciated. The tip of her tail is off. You can just see the bone poking out. It was one of the worst cases Inspector Natalie Taylor had ever seen. Today, she's brought the dog, a crossbreed called Roxy, for a checkup. Come here, dear, sweetie. She's got scars all over her. Uh, she had fresh and old injuries. To be honest with you, my first impressions with her that she's been used as a bait dog, where she's been thrown in with other dogs to just basically attack, or she's been kept with other dogs that have been attacking her. Poor Roxy is still in a terrible state. I feel like somebody needs to pay for this. There's no excuse how anyone can think that's OK to do that to a, an animal. It's absolutely disgraceful. Come on. It's been five days since Roxy was first found, so today vet Sean Taylor is checking on her progress. Just sit her on there now, that's all. Uh, 22.7 thereabouts. She's 21.0 last time, 22.7 today, so... I mean, it's only been since Thursday. It's improving, so yeah. I mean, she's still, she's still emaciated. You see yeah. the bony prominences and what have you. But she's still got a body condition score now of one out of nine. There you go. Okay. Roxy is so thin, it's hard to believe that a few days ago she was even skinnier. Once they reach a body condition of one out of nine, that indicates that they've got no subcutaneous fat left, but they've also started getting muscle atrophy. Myself and my colleagues pick up a lot of skinny, skinny dogs, skinny animals. I think she's one of the skinniest that I've had. The main thing is she's got appetite and she's putting that on. What's your opinion about all the scars? They are consistent with fight injuries. So, you know, I mean, she's had a tussle with a, another animal somewhere along the lines. I mean, these injuries here, they could be consistent with a bite, unusual for a bite, but certainly when you get linear scars of that width, they can be the canine teeth. But the one that's, that she's got on her face is a reasonably fresh puncture wound that's filled up with pus, and that's certainly consistent with a bite. We do yeah. need to carry on with, with more antibiotics just because it is still oozing. Luckily for Roxy, tests have ruled out any underlying medical cause for her being so thin. She just needs food. Well, she's put um, 1.7 kilos on in five days. Well, you should really be looking over a period of probably the next month and she should be somewhere near her, her ideal weight. The next step for Roxy is a stay at the kennels. Steady. Where she'll continue to be cared for throughout her recovery. 
I'm just so glad that we've got her. She's going to get four square meals a day, get this weight on her. When I picked her up, I was so angry. But this is why we come to work. It's just lucky that she's been brought to our attention and that we've been able to intervene and get her the care that she needs. Seems that Natalie has quite a soft spot for our Roxy. She's absolutely adorable. You know, I fall in love with every animal that I pick up. They just give you that unconditional love, you know. I mean, we don't exactly know her background, but still, she's so affectionate, even though she's covered in injuries and she's emaciated. She's so loving. Go on, now. This is the nice part of things, knowing that they're going to be in good hands now and well looked after and loved. We'll catch up with Roxy later and see what effect a bit of TLC has on her. Also coming up, Simba, the anxious husky lurcher cross, proves a tonic for his new owners. Simba's helped me with my anxiety, with my depression, brought me out my shadow a bit like. And tiny Taz gets himself a makeover. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Roxy, the emaciated crossbreed, has been in kennels for the past month, recovering from injuries she is thought to have received while dogfighting. And she's definitely enjoying the love she's been getting from animal care assistant Karen Bahama. This way, Roxy. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Well done. You're a clever girl. Considering she has been so starved, she's really gentle at taking food off you. Come here. Good girl. It can just show you what a dog can go through and still be a darling. <laughs> she just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> can you? She's like, I love this. I love this. Is she good? To fatten her up, she's been on four meals a day. The dog, not Karen. And the feeding regime is paying off. So she was, when she came in, she was 21.9. And the scales today say that she's 28.6. Well done. That's an amazing, <laughs> amazing amount of weight. So yeah, it's very good. We're very happy with that. Ideal weight-wise, we would like her to be about 31, 32 kilograms. So that's only about two kilograms off being perfect. She's now finished her course of antibiotics and painkillers, so it shouldn't be too long before she can find her forever home. So when she first came in, she was really timid, obviously very, very thin, lethargic. She didn't really play and interact. Now she's come on, you can see, leaps and bounds. Roxy said, good girl, ready? Good girl. She's showing all signs of being happy and content with the love that she's getting now. Aren't you? Right? I think it's fair to say that she loves people. She loves people, don't you? For a certain inspector, the feeling was definitely mutual. Seems her rescuer, Natalie Taylor, just can't stay away from Roxy. Oh, she looks fantastic. It's always the same when you bring a skinny dog in. You're always shocked. Okay. My last image of her was skin and bone. And see how good she looks now. She literally looks like a different dog. Really does. She's got really nice shiny coat, you know, and she's obviously happy. <laughs> good girl. Wow. <laughs> I cannot believe the difference. She is absolutely beautiful, aren't you? <laughs> Sit. She's got a great personality. Just shows you how quickly they can come round. Like, even her face looks different. I mean, last time I saw her, her face, side of her face was very swollen, but 
She's beautiful. She's a really pretty nice dog. There's just one hurdle to be clear before Roxy can be rehomed. Has her past experience made her scared of or aggressive with other dogs? We'll find out a bit later. But first, it's time to find out the latest on Taz. The Yorkshire Terrier, who's just been rescued by Claire Wilson, is about to have his painful rotten teeth looked at by vet nurse Jeanette Tungsvig. Hello, sweetie. You're tiny. <laughs> what does it look like in here, then? Shall we get you your pearly whites back? A titchy old chap like Taz needs extra care when it comes to the anaesthetic. Goodbye. Well done. Oh, it's all right. All right. Your veins are so fragile, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> I know, I know. Good boy. I know. This is the problem we have with dogs that are mm. so tiny and so old, is that we have very, very fragile veins. I think you're falling asleep, though. But they managed to get him safely under. Well done. So now, because he's asleep, we can put a tube in to make sure he can breathe. Doesn't look like he has many teeth left. Now Jeanette can begin her examination of Taz's mouth. There should be about 44 teeth in the mouth. This dog is missing loads on the bottom. She starts by removing the tartar so she can see the damage beneath. Well, the gum should have ended here, so it's all lifted up. And these are actually the roots of the teeth. That would be painful for the dog. If the teeth are causing anybody pain, then those teeth are not worth having, so... There we are. That's half of it. That's the other one. And we'll just make sure it's nice and smooth. It's a large tooth for a little dog, so the gum needs stitches to help it heal. And then it also decreases the amount of food that the dog traps in there. These are absorbable sutures, so they'll just fall out over the next couple of weeks. But by that time, the mouth would have healed. It's a bit of an extra challenge, stitching on something that's this small. If you brush your dog's teeth every day, or frequently, you can probably decrease the chance of getting to this stage. And long term, would he always need to be on soft food? Because he's not got many teeth. He so. shouldn't need to, really. Um, the gums are already very firm. Uh, and they don't chew their food very much. Yeah. They just swallow it, most dogs. It has a lot more teeth on this side as well. This one has to come out, because you can see that you can see the, the root. And then the one behind is actually loose as well, so we'll take that one out. The good thing is that this dog will probably be much more comfortable without these teeth. Altogether, Taz has six rotten teeth removed. And you'll look much more presentable, Taz. Oh, you're already waking up. He's going to be a bit confused, so he might do a little bit of singing, because he's not quite sure why he's here. Taz will need to be on soft food for 10 days while his stitches heal. Yeah. He'll go home with some tablets, yeah. antibiotic tablets, yeah. and some pain relief as well. Yeah. So, you're all right. I believe he has six teeth left. His bloods show that he had an infection going on, which is most likely due to his bad teeth. Two or three weeks, we'll know if, if he's gaining loads of weight. Hopefully, he can continue to, to be a happy little dog. With his nasty gnashes a thing of the past, things are looking up for Taz. Here, little man, do you fancy this? And over the next few weeks, with plenty to eat and tons of TLC, He's starting to look like a very different dog. <laughs> Come on, boy. Shall we let you off the lead so you can have a proper run around? Good boy. Oh, you found freedom, hey? <laughs> he's amazingly mobile, especially considering he's got problems with his, with his knees. Should we warm you up a bit, hey? He was quite withdrawn when I picked him up and I think he was used to being carried around all the time. Now he seems a lot more like a, a proper dog. He's happy to run around on the ground and just, just seems um, a lot happier. <laughs> 
he's steadily putting on weight as long as he has regular vet checks and stays on his painkillers for his poorly legs. All I see is a bright future for him now. I think he's gorgeous. <laughs> I'd take him home if I, um, well, I have to set my limit at three, so <laughs> I haven't got a vacancy at the moment. Hopefully it won't be long before the little fella's future is settled. Here, let's go this way. <laughs> Come on, see? Animal centres across the country are chock-a-block with dogs of a senior age like Taz, all looking for their forever homes. On average, it takes an older dog three times longer to find a home than a puppy. Back at Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, I'm with Joss Iveson and Staffy Tyson. Tell me about Tyson here. Oh, Tyson's 12 years old, so he's one of our little sort of golden oldies. Um, he's been with us about just over four months. Is it harder to rehome an older dog, do you find? Yeah, it is a lot harder, Tyson being 12, because people tend to want the young dogs. Mainly, they come for puppies and things like that. They think, oh, it's 12, it's getting on a bit, you know, we've got much life left with it. But they're socialised yeah. and they're house got all that, That's the nice bit, you haven't yeah. got all that to worry <laughs> about. That's what we say, that's our selling point. Yeah. It's like he's just a lovely companion for you. He's ready made. Yeah. He's ready to go. His character's there, you know what you're getting. It's not like when you get a young one, you've got to find out what it's going to be like. And he's immensely strong, so if you break down, he'll tow you home. Yeah, exactly, perfect. <laughs> so many assets, puppies. So many kids. puppies are Who rubbish. Wants a puppy? Rubbish. Old timer Tyson not only has his age to contend with, but his breed as well. Staffy types account for eighty percent of the dogs in rescue centres. And some people still a bit nervous about rehoming a Staffy because of their reputation. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the bad press. Right. It still sort of has a bit of a stigma to it um, with Staffies. Um, you know, they're very much a family dog, love children, so gentle, loving and loyal. Yeah. So it's just really sort of trying to break that. And this stigma. one is socialised, he's house trained. Yeah, ready to go. He's ready to go. You know, yes, he's 12 years old, but look at him. He's look lovely. at you. Look at him. Look at you. So hopefully, you'll find a new home. Somewhere. Yeah, hopefully. We find do a special to live, Tyson. Yeah, live out the rest of his retirement, won't yeah. you, buddy? Yeah. Definitely. You're so pretty. Earlier, Husky Lurch across Simba was signed over. He was having problems with separation anxiety and his home was getting ruined. He's actually chewed the wall here as well. He's chewed he? literally everything. When you look at it from this side, actually, he's done a lot of damage, hasn't he? He needed to find a new owner who wouldn't leave him home alone and would have time to help him with his separation issues. Fast forward six months, and Lucky Simba's done just that. That's a good boy. With new owners, Susan Jones and her son, Darren. It was love at first sight. It was his character. We walked towards his cage, and he come running at us with a little ball. Our eyes met, and that was it. I knew he was the dog we'd like to bring home with us. First time we brought him home, he was quiet. He was quite shy. Not so shy now. But after... A couple of hours, he settled in and he was running about, straddling the garden. I can't imagine being at home about Simba. It'll be too quiet. Good boy. Simba's a much happier dog these days, and his anxiety problem has gradually improved too. He's not so bad now. We can leave him for short periods of time, whereas we couldn't leave him at all when we first had him. And nine times out of ten, there is somebody with him. Simba's new family have helped him cope with his separation worries and seems he's had a transformative effect on them too. Darren suffers with anxiety and he didn't want to go out or anything. Good boy. And when we brought him home, he helped us and helped Darren because Darren is now going out and taking the dog, which has given him confidence in meeting other people. Simba's helped, helped me like, with my anxiety, with my depression. Brought me out my shell a bit, like going for walks. Let's have a walk Good now. boy. <laughs> Good boy. One, two, three. Go. Go. 
Good boy. Good boy. My favourite thing about him is his, his cheeky personality. He just wants to play, constantly play. Yeah. Good boy. Good on it. Good boy. Once a stressed out and lonely boy, now Simba is enjoying being an important part of his new family. Good boy. He's full of life. All and part with him for the world. We're very happy to hear it. Coming up. You ah. two are lumps. Bouncy Roxy finds herself a new playmate. They love each other. <laughs> they really do. Five months after she was rescued, crossbreed Roxy is still living in kennels. And she's got a new canine pal to keep her company, as well as animal care assistant Dave Butterfield. We've recently paired her up with another dog called Clay. Obviously, with Roxy's history of where she's come from, we weren't sure how she'd get on with other dogs. But she seems to have found a friend in Clay, and they seem to be doing really well together. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Looks like Roxy has already mastered the art of sitting. But this bouncy girl loves nothing better than a good run around with her new playmate. Good boy, Clay. Good boy. Okay, yeah. go on. There we go, we're going to have a mad five minutes. You two are lumps. Clay <laughs> just fell over her head. <laughs> they love each other, <laughs> they really do. Just like brother and sister, so they fight and then they play. Started to be able to really relax and just enjoy yourself. Just need someone to adopt her now. It's long overdue. Yeah. Animal care assistant Ellen Dodson reckons she needs a very special owner. Roxy does not know her own size. She's very puppy headed, but a very big dog. She's huge. People really do need to put the training and the effort into her and be really patient as well. Um, you know, she's come from a bad background, so I'm sure there's something still in there that remembers that, so she needs to make sure that she is loved. Yep. This. Yep. <laughs> I do love how they do that. <laughs> Roxy has made a miraculous recovery from her horrible ordeal. All her wounds have healed really well, so she's only got a few little scars just left on her. She's looking really good. Her weight's all beautiful. Her fur's beautiful. We're really happy with how she is. Yeah. Go on, mister. Good boy. See you later, Rox. As well as giving her clay to buddy around with, the staff have been keeping Roxy stimulated with agility training, but it's still a work in progress. We've tried to get her to do some of the agility stuff, so she's, she's not quite picked up yet. <laughs> but she's getting there, I think. You can do it. Good girl. Gonna lean on you all the way. One day you'll just jump both. Some dogs take to it quite quick. I tend to find sort of staffies, collies, terriers. They're usually straight up and over. And other dogs, maybe more sort of lurcher types, aren't as keen. But she's like an American bull cross lurcher. So American bulls will be happy going over it. So come. Now. She's, she's picking up everything else, it's just certain things. She'd rather find her own little way round. Uh, but she's really good in terms of getting her to come and sit now, so you can sort of call her over. Roxy, come. Beep, beep. Sit. Good girl. Roxy's owner has never been traced, but this big softie definitely deserves to find someone to love her and take her home. We're keeping our fingers crossed that it happens soon. So what's the latest on Taz, the skinny Yorkie with the wobbly knees and just six teeth? He was signed over to the charity and his owner received an adult written caution. And we're happy to say he very quickly found his forever home with Susan Smith and family and he's got a little sister too, 
five-year-old Yorkie, Poppy. I've had Taz for uh, coming up to four months now. We'd always wanted another dog for Poppy to try and bring her out of our shell because she's quite timid. And it was just pure luck that I happened to look and saw Taz's photograph on the website. Four. High five. Good girl. We've tried teaching him how to play with the toys and asking him to sit, and he just seems a bit clueless. <laughs> sit. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't really understand what we want. But Taz does know exactly what he wants. Treats and cuddles. And Poppy's food. You like Poppy's food. <laughs> Always better than your food. Come on, Taz. Good boy, Taz. Well done. Taz definitely has um, a good appetite, but if he gets the chance, he does kind of pinch some of Poppy's fruit throughout the day. Oh, she's going to leave it lying around. So we've just got to keep an eye on him, really, and make sure that he doesn't eat all of her food as well. Come on. Once a worryingly emaciated old fella, this ten-year-old is back to the peak of health, and with the help of his daily painkillers, he certainly doesn't act his age. He's quite lively, and I didn't think he would be for being an older dog. He absolutely loves going for walks. The slightest hint of anybody putting a coat on or anything like that, and he thinks he's going out and he, he comes alive. He just really wants to be out all the time. Sisters Charlotte and Hannah now have a dog each to walk. Come on, Taz. Taz's knee issue actually improved quite well since we first got him. The distance we take him out on walks is like gradually increased, so now he can go on longer walks. Come on, Taz. Come on. Taz's new family have given him a fresh start, and he's made their lives better too. I can't imagine a home without Taz. We didn't really think we'd find a dog that Poppy would be comfortable with. She, she settles around him and they cuddle up together, so that's all we ever wanted was something for another dog for her to have a friend. Good on you, Taz. You've got the forever home you deserve.